Welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Tracked Before. This time, Parallels. Yes, TNG Parallels. You can tell by the generic title, Parallels, on It's All Been Tracked Before. Uh, speaking of Parallels, get in our Parallel Universe. Follow us on Facebook. It's All Been Tracked Before. That's what we are there. That's what we are here. It's a Parallel Universe, but we're, you're there with us, even more than you are here, but you get interact with us. Uh, a lot of fun. I, I love it. I think you'll love it, too. Have fun. Come tell us what you think of what we're up to. Connect with us on Facebook. Uh, just like... Don't avoid us like you avoid your uncles. We're a lot more fun. And all we do is talk about Star Trek. Uh, but right now, and that's what we're going to do right now. This is Parallels on It's All Been Trek Before. Let's do another episode of It's All Been Trek Before. Your regular hosts are here. This is Steven. And Keith. Jimmy Jerome. We're here to talk the Next Generation episode, Parallels. And wait, Steven wasn't there a minute ago and now he's here. And you Keith, your background had been, uh, but now it's got Jerry. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny if you if you just waited. I was actually in the process of changing my background or something. Oh, that would have been really funny if you changed your background. First impressions on parallels. Let's find it. All right. Well, I mean, I had wanted to say first of all that I, I thought of what the what the alternate title because this, this could be a thing. Second sight uh, for, for yeah for for yeah second sight last week's should have been for yeah DS nine should have been burning desires. <laughs> ah. if it, yeah there's all it, it keeps yeah there's all you know he he wanted to burn up in a blaze of glory she wanted to get out the you know, the there we go you know the sun i'm on fire that too so for this one i think i'm, I'm gonna go with maybe finishing in first place that might be the title clinging, clinging on to the past i don't know there's there's, there's, a, there's a few things i could come up with yeah <laughs> but your past clinging on the past lives we'll see my first question is uh, I liked it a lot. I did not take that many notes. I took some up to a point and then I stopped, which I think because I was just in the episode and stuff. So yeah. And, and again, speaking of parallels, last week we talked about, oh, what's the mystery? And you know, I usually hate that. But this one, I thought I, I was expecting to be very disappointed. I wasn't. I thought that's where the episode really started to take off is once we got into that. I don't, and I know there's based on my research afterwards. A lot of people really like the physics they got into. And I mean, to the point where someone like, well, it's not exactly right, but it's still pretty cool. And I'm not going to, I don't want to bed too far to some of the really cool stuff that happened near the end and all that stuff. But I ended up enjoying a lot. And I guess Trek people do too. It's one of the, the favorites out there. So Sorry, I, I know I squandered my turn essentially in a bit. I, I yield the rest of my time to the representative from Newark. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was say, I was going to say that. We're finally getting to the point where I was like, oh, I remember seeing this now. Because mm. I, I remember, I keep saying, I saw, I, I was around during season seven. I remember, I remember all these things that were happening that couldn't have happened until now. And now it's finally like, oh, this, right. This is when this started to do this. Mm. But even before that, I could tell it's going to be a, a warp centric episode. And it feels like forever since we've had one, because they've just sort of let his character kind of flounder for feels like an entire season prior to this. It's like what what happened to all that development we were getting, and so we finally get to it used to be more it's, like a shark, and hmm? then it used to be more of a shark early on, and then now it's more of a flounder, perhaps. But it just the I, I like to see I like seeing the modern version of him and and, and his mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, the, the, I don't, don't want to say moderation necessarily, but you know his character with the bits of u using him for comic relief in the right mm -hmm. way. I'll say that. And also yeah. more characterization with, with you know, his background, what's going on. And also, I, I'm always a sucker for these kinds of time and alternate reality things. I like it expanding beyond him being a Klingon and just more, this is war, not... Now I'm on our political podcast, but <laughs> that he has to be a representative of all Klingons or anything like that. And this is war. And I mean, obviously we have plenty of episodes that show it, that he isn't. But this episode, obviously some of the Klingon the fact that his clan comes in, but for the most part, it's this is worth that character to to back up your point, Keith. So yeah, yeah. So at the beginning, we we have him come home from the tournament. I, I did wonder where he who he was showing the trophy to when he talks about winning because he's holding it up. But I guess it's because it's a video diary and he's recording it for posterity. I don't know. I love it. <laughs> uh, it I'll matters later, it but me. it seemed it seemed odd to me in the moment. Uh. So. Then we get back, and Riker really hates surprise parties that he tells Worf. 
that was great. You know, give him a surprise party, which I immediately thought he's just protesting too much. And then with the way things developed, I'm like, maybe he wasn't. Maybe this Riker really hates surprise parties. But then I came back around and I think, no, he really was just messing with him. Yeah. It's just hard it to tell. predictable, but it was still satisfying to me. Well, they, they explained it at the end, too. So, yeah. And I imagine that Picard, yeah, you're right. They didn't say it yet. Confirm that he does like surprise parties. Too deep into the episode on this point. Why do people have to cut their own birthday cake? When did that become a tradition? I'm I glad know. you reminded me of that. I never understand I, that. Well, no, it's, it's um, birthday. I th- we had we you know the IABD anniversary anniversary was this this past weekend. What's the <laughs> Jimmy Jerome? Yeah, the cake? yes, <laughs> yes, when, essentially. When was the anniversary? Nine months um, ago. <laughs> arg. Anyway, like six um, months ago. You're you're right, though, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Jimmy got us a, a, a beautiful looking cake with the, with the logo and everything on it. And I just couldn't, it, I, it's something about me. I can't bear to cut into things like that. You know, maybe if it were, if it were my own thing, I was just like, oh, whatever. It but is. I just, but no, no, it's, it's not the same. You thing. have it's been not, part of the troop since the beginning. That's almost every single show. It is your cake <laughs> as much as it is anyone's cake. Keith. You, you know what I mean? Not like <laughs> I'm not the one who acquired he, it and had, had to safely get it from one you know, point A to point B. That's, a, that's a different kind of You'll no, I, I may have acquired it, but it was for you all. Hmm. So I don't consider it my cake. Arg. My point being that I feel uncomfortable ruining those kinds of decorations and just that feels, you know, that kind of whatever it is. I don't want to say OCD necessarily, but, you know, the, the things that align with that sort of thing were just. Eh. Yeah. I have a Troy fashion note, but I'm going to save it for later because it's all ends up being one big giant fashion note, but we'll get there later. So. Bacard, they mentioned Bacard's not at the party, mm. but then he it, he is suddenly is. And when they mentioned that he wasn't going to be at the party, I was like, oh, he's smart. He just opted out of this because he knows Worf's not going to appreciate it. So I'm not going to be part of it. But no, I, apparently he really was busy. The cake looked fantastic. And I did also bump on that it was chocolate and that it wasn't chocolate. But man, yeah. that looked like a great cake. I wanted to eat that cake for sure. I so- felt the same way. And Maybe that's another reason I like the episode a lot is like, I thought I was being gaslighted because I'm like, am I losing my mind? Because I was like, that cake, is that, uh, you know what, let's, let's just roll with it and, and all that. Yeah. I, yeah. That's, that's uh, it looked delicious. It made me hungry. It, sorry. I went, I went one to the third of that. It was just something about the way it was so well done because of course I'm watching th- these things the way that I usually do sort of multitasking to an extent. You know, I was, you know, I was focusing on this one a little bit more than usual, but at the same time, if I'm, if I blink or if I glance away, I'm not even catching what, what the problem is until I was like, Oh, right. this, well, like, like the, the Picard thing. My first thought was, okay, Patrick Schwartz just not, isn't in this episode or something. That's what I thought. And it's like, Oh, whatever. And then, yep. Oh wait, he's there. Okay. Huh? They were just doing a little tease or something, I guess. And we didn't see him come in and you know, th- they, th- those little things just keep adding up where it's like, well, maybe. And yeah, I like that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So they're singing oh, no, for no. he's a jelly good fellow in Klingon, which was delightful. With, oh, too. yeah, 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 yeah. I love uh, that. That's not part of my Klingon Language Institute books. They don't have a translation of. I read Klingon. that, and this has changed, thankfully, finally, but happy birthday was too expensive. So yeah. that's why they went with for he's a jolly good fellow. I keep he- All right. So they were cutting huge pieces of cake. Mm-hmm. Like each piece of cake I saw on a plate was enough for three people, at yeah. least. Replicators. Well, I guess, <laughs> but you do notice that Troy took a fork full of her cake and fed it to Riker, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which mm. no, in the earlier seasons, I wouldn't have thought of it, anything of it, but in this particular episode, yes. based on how it ends, it feels a little weird. Yeah. Fantastic. No, it's good. Mm. A good sort of way to, to establish baselines. Even when, when uh, sorry, he comes back and he, and he's thanking Troy for, um, well, that's the reason why this sounds weird. And he's thanking Troy for having watched after Alexander, making it clear that there's no more to the relationship than that in various ways and moving on from there. Well, and they mentioned in the reality, the first reality we get to where Worf's married to Deanna, they data, or maybe it's not even the first one, but the one reality where Worf finds out the backstory, data mentions that Worf asked for Ecker's permission. Yeah. Very notably, he does not ask for Ecker's permission in the I, regular timeline, which I thought, I thought was a little too. bit on. I thought it was interesting. But they, Especially because Riker and Worf in this episode seem so friendly, unless it's revenge for not telling him about the surprise party. But it, it, it seems like such buddies lately. It seems odd he does not ask permission. 
Not that I'm saying he has to. No, 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 no. She no, is not owned by Riker. It's not like no patriarchal bull crap. Oh, but. I'm not. I'm not gasping for that. I'm just. I'm just trying to to get my head around a few things there because I appreciated that they gave us that scene almost for that purpose. It's almost like they wanted you. I'm like wondering, was that the purpose of even putting it there for us to expect him to do that and and maybe make some sort of something significant about him not choosing to do that at that moment or. Was it a whim that he didn't consider until he got in the room? I, no, I think that's what it was. I think that's really, I don't think he was even thinking about doing that until he was in there. And <laughs> yeah, and, and Deanna demonstrated how well, the, I mean, this version of her knew him, how good of friends they become almost like they could be close enough to date. And I think that, I think it, he had developed that fondness for the other Troy and the, through the, you know, you know, through the other journeys. And he was like, you know what? Why, why haven't I given this a chance? And it was like a spur of the moment. Why don't you stay? I, I, don't, I don't need to take advantage of you like this. I don't need to brush you off. Let's just, you know. I did think that was kind of the, the red kryptonite thing I talk about all the time where you use a thing or naked now, naked time thing where it's like, yeah, all these weird things are happening, but it's still used to advance the characters hmm. in some way. So I, I, I like that aspect of it. And I also think maybe that's why I like the alternate universe thing here because although we did have some extreme ones as well, but we also had those just slight variations rather than, yeah, actually there were a ton of slight variations in this rather than, oh, we're all lizards in this, in this universe. Yes. Kind of thing. So. I was, I was going to say something similar about that. It's not even just, yeah, it doesn't have to be even that cartoonish, which is, which is fun sometimes when you want to let's do all kinds of wacky things and, and play it for humor. But all of the, all of the, the character reactions seem fairly realistic and, you know, and not, not to knock university or any, or, 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 or Discovery or any other things have done things like this when you have to do like the, well, we're, well, we're in another universe, universe has to be complete it. opposite. We have to do, you know, the, oh, they have to be mean or this person has to be nice now or those kinds of mm -hmm. relationships. It was just little things where, what, what, what are you talking, what, Worf, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with what you're saying. What's going mm -hmm. on? They weren't freaking out. I mean, they, I mean, they were, they were rightfully concerned in certain places, but it wasn't like they were panicking or blowing their lids it's it was realistically like we we need to think about this for a moment or let's let's ask some follow-up questions that kind of thing and i wish uh, i'd written it yeah. down but it this also gets closest to the thing they used to talk about especially in the 70s after when tos had his first revival infinite diversity and infinite combinations mm -hmm. and that's kind of what they they actually allude to it kind of here at some point not they don't say those same words but kind of like that but yeah i really like those aspects of it as well the journey back to the party at the beginning, mm -hmm. they put the painting up there and Data tells Worf what it is, even though it's supposed to be more abstract. Jordy walks in, looks at it, immediately says what it is. Jordy's visor can't see the painting, right? So he's just messing with Worf at that point. Right. Right. I didn't catch that. That's funny though. I think. I mean, uh, they always pretend based on whenever he looks at panels or paintings or anything that Jordy can see flat, right. two dimensional, similar, same warmth object or warmth flatness temperature flatness objects which makes no sense for how the visor is described to working mm. for us so i just assume he's always messing with us when things like that happen but i just assume it's arbitrary writing and and the storyline well, advancement his, they don't consider that but, you know. triggers time and space uh, or whatever. <laughs> you're most likely correct on the writing keith this was written by brown and braga who's one of the mm. the main guys by this point one of the big guys at this point but yeah i mean there, there could be there could be chemicals in the paint that do something or Wait, who, who do they say created it? Data. So I assume Data told Jordy, and Jordy was just like messing with Worf because it was supposed to be abstract. So Worf wouldn't know what it was. So to have somebody else come in and comment on the correct thing that it is is, you know, it could be that, more. or maybe I mean Data could have even taken into account what what Jordy's capabilities would be when have painted something specifically so that he could have seen it. Why when would he for a painting for Worf when the the painting kept changing to be inclusive? I. I wrote down on an episode, but this is really just what it made me think of. I don't know if you guys saw The Father with Anthony Hopkins' Oscar winning performance. No. When he beat out Black Panther, rest in peace, but for a different movie for best actor. But one of the things they did in that movie was very similar to that, where, it, you know, the idea is that Anthony Hopkins' character is suffering from dementia. So in that movie, the set just keeps changing ever so slightly Ooh. enough that you as the viewer are like, crap is that the same is it different what's going on here and i thought and for a for a 45 minute episode where we only did that for like 10 or 20 minutes i got the same feeling except even more maybe even more heightened in a sense because it was so 
I mean, this is more dramatic there. Where, whereas in the father, it's like you're, it's, you know, it's an hour and a half, hour, 35 minute movie where, you know, you're 70 minutes in, you're like, I don't know what's going on here. And then it's like, that makes sense because neither does the father. And, and definitely I felt the same way as Warp to have, you know, 25, 30 minutes in. Like, I, I do not know what's going on here and I'm losing it. Uh, the other one, obvious, uh, and again, not really an honored episode, but more of a, everything everywhere all at once. This was definitely. Ooh. That same kind of infinite Forgot about that. possibilities kind of thing. We didn't we didn't get into that many different ones, you know. And we always talk about Rick and Morty with all their alternate right. and Family Guy kind of stuff. So we didn't get that many, but I thought we got just enough, you know. And I, I'm, I'll keep holding back on it. The, the one mm-hmm. that I think most people were most like, "Oh my god!" about, but yeah. So, well, um, yeah. First of all, yeah, th- that's what I meant. Uh, examples of when people usually do this, they usually play it for those kinds of effects. They they play yeah. it so they have. A vehicle to do red kryptonite for one thing right or to to show wacky effects and play it for humor and mm. uh, give the audience some escape but i like that they didn't take away from the point of what was happening right. by going to those extremes this is this is like hey guys this this is imagine if something like this really happened to you what would you do you know and to you know to examine the the, you know, uh, the those little effects those little things that could have happened here or there that would have butterflied or snowballed into this other thing later had something Butterfly. else oh right nice butterfly effect nice way to slip yes. that in there. <laughs> so at the party it's weird that alexander's not there but i guess we get the mold of his head to make up for the fact that he's not there <laughs> which is kind, of, <laughs> kind of funny then we get the scene where we're talking to troy about him and says you're like a mother and asks basically to be if troy will be his godmother i know he says stepsister but it comes across as godmother to me I, 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 do I, heard the thing, I heard the same exact thing in my brain i heard godmother and it's definitely different word. It's definitely the equivalent of a godmother, but uh, I think they do the other part of the line just so he can say like that, bit, or she can say that makes Lux Anna uh, with your stepmother. Would you uh, be willing to accept that? He's like, yeah. I didn't think of that, but okay. Which I mean, we remember Loxana and Alexander bonding. So right, clearly, I, thought, like, I didn't think about hmm. that too. So. so I think I think at that point, while Worf does not want to be related to Loxana, he's fine being related to Troy, obviously, because he cares for Troy. But if something happens to him, putting Alexander's care in the hands of Deanna and Loxana, I think is fine. Like mm-hmm. he knows his son's taken care of. The son that he doesn't bother to take care of, he knows somebody <laughs> else to take care. Of. Well, that was also a good one, uh, the, what I referred to before. I think that was a good way of establishing. I think they chose stepsister for that purpose. Yeah, uh, for for the audience to have a translation for w- the way they felt about about each other, or, or were, com- were comfortable referring to each other without disappointment. It wasn't like one of them was like, "Oh, okay." That was a great. That I think it was a, a a great anchoring point for his 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 humorous presence as a character, where he plays that line so straight, but at the same time, you know, sort sort of like, <laughs> for lack of a better term, like data straight. Where, it's, where it's, he's, he could be kind of joking, but maybe he's not, but he kind of is, but it kind of is, you know, that kind of thing. They got that delivery right. So for over the, oh, I hadn't considered that. I'm willing to take that risk. You know, that, that just, you know. Yeah. Worf forgot things about his concussion, the trophy and the recording and stuff. At that point, nice. I'm like, that's not how a concussion works, right? That you have different memories from the memories that they're telling you. Like, well, that, that to me, <laughs> to get a little bit ahead of myself, I think it's pretty annoying that Crusher just dismisses him when his memories are yeah, completely different. Yeah. And also, like, she's had the same experience before where she has different memories of everyone else on the ship, and she had to convince them to trust her, and she doesn't right. trust Worf. He's like, ah, from her, it's really rich coming <laughs> from not trusting him. If, like, oh, it's just a concussion, you'll be fine. Go on to the bridge. It, it, it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I think that was that helped add to the dis- disorientation effect for me too, though. I, mean, I didn't. I didn't realize where we were going with this at that point. And I think that helped keep me off balance too. I, I, or I'd rather I'd forgotten where this was going to go. And I think it's reasonably realistic that training experience or no, if somebody had just hit their head, if somebody really had gotten a concussion, you would probably mm, that's that's your reflex to go. Oh, it's I, probably that. You know, as his whatever was going on got worse, I wrote down he's got CTE. He's got like football level CTE. Yes. And I was like, we need to make these tournaments safer. And like, there's no concussion protocol. But then eventually it's like, oh, okay. So it actually had nothing to do with it. But I mean, like, it could have been like I, a I dream. That was an Sorry. interesting section, though. But yeah, when she's like, oh, you know what? If it gets worse, let me know. It's like, I don't think he should be on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but th- then again, it makes sense. It's like, well, something's still not quite right here. And I, 
And again, I, as someone who hates, usually hates the mystery parts, I thought it, the fact that they were just like, we're not going to linger on it. We're just going to keep plowing through with scene, 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 scene. Here's, yes. another, here's another, here's another. And that, yes. For me, that was what was like, okay, I'm trying, I'm losing, like I said, I'm losing <laughs> my mind along with war. And I think that's what I really liked about the episode. Mm-hmm. There was a purposeful way they directed it. Director Robert Weiner, one of our regulars, where mm-hmm. they were trying to get you into War's frame of mind. I did not find it very effective, but I can see where certain aspects of it were attempting to do that. So, what, why, why didn't you find it effective? Do you think? I think because they're just too much. Didn't make sense to me. Like, first of all, I have not seen this episode, but it okay. feels like other Star Trek episodes but it doesn't follow on the path of those other Star Trek episodes. Like I mentioned, Crusher already had a similar episode where she experienced things very differently from everybody else. Mm-hmm. But they're not even like, as the doctor, and as somebody that experiences that, the fact that had experienced that, the fact that she didn't give Worf the, any trust of investigating his feelings further bothered me. And that early on took me out of it. But then other things just being so blatantly different and blatantly changing in front of his eyes, but then just not, like I'm like okay, it's a gimmick. It's it's another one of these types of episodes. I see that keeps me out of it because I remember the other types of episodes that are like this, and it hmm. takes me out of the experience. I think hmm. I I thought they did a better job here, but a better job think. for sure. This is better than the Crusher episode. I'm not saying it's yeah, not. Well, yeah, I'm just saying because of that, that hurts this. Right. Because that one existed. Had that one not existed, this would be a little better than it is. I think that's fair. In fact, just listen to one of our other previous podcasts. Oh, it was, it was me and you, Jimmy, talking about uh, DS9, mm-hmm. the Brian Keith episode, where, and you made some very good arguments about why that episode was better. And I was just like, nope, I've been through this too many times. I've been burned too many times before. <laughs> that I still was like, I can't rise up to where you are, but you, you talked me into it. But um I feel bad. I can't remember the name of that episode. But yeah, I, I, that's a fair point. Just to go back to the Crusher exam or sick bay, she's like, I'm going to give you a hyperspray, which is something I've been saying for years. Like hyperspray cures all. Like hmm. I've always said, if we had a hyposprays now, like anytime anyone got out of control, kid, even kids, you know, I know <laughs> that people with kids might think might, might not like this, but it's like hypospray. Shh, they're down for a couple seconds. Hmm. Oh, this guy's getting agitated and angry at Taco Bell. Shh, hypospray. He's down. So I think mm-hmm. it, it, it's a nonviolent way to subdue people. My it, well, my theory is that basic, um, even though it is invasive, there's no I was, needle. Involved. I was just going to say that yes, you you can email email me about this one. I think, I, but I would say that most parents of, of children like that would probably just not want to admit publicly that they would support that uh, having, Jimmy, a, having, a, having a having a spray that which yeah. <laughs> Ethan IBD. It's yes. Exactly. Can you imagine how convenient that would be. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the the thing about the, the the different level levels of immersion. When Jimmy started to explain, I could see it. it's a, it's just a, it's a it's a mindset. But no, that I mean, the general explanation of being burnt too many times before, I do appreciate. I like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, 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 those types of distractions for me, far more accustomed to sort of lo- like losing my place while I'm watching things like that. So I start to start questioning myself for a second. Like I can think, you know, reviewing my memory. Was I paying attention enough to this one? Oh, okay, man, I'll just keep going. All right, what did what, oh, and so that you kind of get that feeling of whoa wait a minute and then oh it's not me and then that kind of you know mm-hmm. it, was, it was it was i think it was a good yeah, yeah. you know what it is it's it's like all right so <laughs> I, I keep thinking of these these kinds of analogies lately for, for, for a magician's tricks for some reason analogies so you know jimmy jimmy is a magician who has seen certain kinds of things he sees this trick come up and it does this thing that doesn't really appeal to him quite because it, it, he catches something he's like oh, okay whatever and it's it's he realizes later, okay, well, okay, I see what they did. He knows he did not have a quarter behind his ear. What's that? He knows he did not have a quarter behind his ear. Something to that extent. But there is something that, that happened that, you know, this magician happens to do that, that pulls us off balance for a second. So, oh, okay, wait, I'm on board now. Okay, I'm, I'm willing to, let's go. Then, you know, different entrance. So we, we probably rejoin to the train at different points for, you know, lack of a better way to end that analogy. Speaking of that kind of memory loss or coming in, I'll do my fashion note now for Troy. So at some point she shows up in uh, Worf's room in her evening wear. And I wrote, I just forgot the first 20 minutes of the episode. <laughs> then she shows up in another outfit from a previous season, which I, didn't, uh, well, I, which I did realize at the time. And I was like, yep. And I just forgot the last 10 minutes. 
<laughs> so they just reintroduced all the different up- outfits she wore. That was fun. Season, which I thought was, that, I, that makes a lot of sense. I, I really enjoyed it. Well, I enjoyed that because I enjoy Troy. Or I, I enjoy Marina Sirtis, but yeah. But yeah, at first at the, at the party when she's in her, the, the jumpsuit or whatever, I'm like, well, that's weird. And I was just like, oh, I thought she was done with that. And then <laughs> that was one of the first things that clued me in because like five seconds later, she was in her back in her uniform that she's been wearing of late. So brain damaged Worf actually locked his door. <laughs> and I think it's Troy, it might be Troy who's like, why is your door locked? He's like, right. Why wouldn't it be locked? <laughs> like, finally, after all these years, somebody is locking their door on the Enterprise. Now they just got to get rid of the open door policy on all the files uh, to, to visitors. So we're getting there. Good job, Picard. <laughs> oh, by the way, Parallels, I, I, another generic title. I, yeah. we, I know we talked about this last week, but. And, and at the beginning of this, some, or, uh, beginning of this I mean, episode. Before. They could have got in on everything ever all at once then. They could have gone with an infinite mm. diversity. An infinite co- they could have just gone with IDIC. Trek yeah. people would have known what it meant. And then other people could have tried to figure it out. But, so I mean, my next note is when Morph goes to the bridge. Before the bridge really looks all that different. And there's a, they talk to, on the screen, a Cardassian, Golden Nadar, played by Mark Bramhall, best known for Annabelle Creation, Colony, Call of Duty Black Ops, mm. and playing a Vulcan elder in the 2009 film Star Trek. Nice. Which is his only other Star Trek credit. But the thing I thought was weird is they built this whole Cardassian bridge, which is cool. I, I liked it. I like to see it. But he's the only one on it. And it's like, okay, could you not afford any extras in this? Well, they're doing a lot of stuff. I guess. But <laughs> the, on the whole bridge, there should be more than one Cardassian. I'm just saying. I But I really liked his performance, though. Yeah, the Cardassian's oh. fine. I just... Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I, just, I mean, in general, though, well... Mm. Mm. Kardashians usually amuse me the way the types of lines they give them, the types of banter they, they have back and forth between. And this is a, I, li- I like seeing different versions of how, how it comes across to, to get the, it sort of like, I think enhances them all as a whole, as far as the way that they kind of d- different degrees of subtlety and civility when, when they're not necessarily making accusations or playing the game of saying things in a certain way, but just his demeanor seemed to, Almost like, that's what I'm looking for, friendly in comparison in certain ways, but not, not, at, not quite as overtly friendly as some of the others that are, that are clearly doing it almost not quite sarcastically, but kind of like, hi, I'm just being your friend, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Sure. So there, there are changes slowly. The bridge, I mean, it evolves slowly, but I like some of the differences with the whole like arc changing and then the walls changing and then everything changing. We also get Worf's quarters changing because now they're shared with Troy, which is why there's flowers and stuff. Yeah, uh, and their insignias <laughs> changed a little bit. Um, oh, I know so those were, were the s- those were the same insignias from Future Imperfect. That's it. Yeah, yep. Where they have the the gold bars for solid pips, the silver bars for hollow pips, and then the black bars for no pip. Yep. Was that the wait? So that was one that where was they had the to take the episode. of TNG. Yeah. Uh, so they had to take the other version of something back to the other thing so they could do the... This was the, a fourth the, season episode where Riker was like seeing a future. Was that? He, right, but didn't they have both, like, both ships and they had to they take it... Or am I thinking of a different uh, different series? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> he when he, he's in sickbay the whole time? He's imagining the whole thing? Mm, I don't... I don't know. I don't <laughs> remember. I'll look. Okay. Because that sounds like something that would have been a chain reaction from some other event that really did, in theory, happen in canon, but didn't end up happening because I think they changed it, right? Yeah. I feel like... Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Is that the one? I, that the, I don't remember. I mean, if, it's in, if it's different in Signia, you would think it would have to be. But yeah, they were using the Insignia from a previous episode was, I guess, the point to save budget. Mm-hmm. I They're still like saving that. all the budget up for the series finale, I think, at this point. I feel like our description isn't perfect. <laughs> or perhaps it will be in the future. So Worf finds out he's been married to Troy for three years, ever since he broke his back. I remember that episode, of course. But yeah, very specific. And I li- I kind of like that some of those things could stay consistent across the different realities because it made it easier to follow than if everything had changed every time. Right. right. Wait. So that, oh my God, that was when I first thought that was going to happen. Were, were the, were the room? Because I remember, wow, 
uh, it did feel realistically there. That was like when they established the sort of thing where she was starting to take care of Alexander, right? Where, where he was he going to try to commit suicide? Is that the one where, where Warp broke his back and he was like sort of? Oh, uh, I, that sounds right. I'm not yeah, sure. broke his spot. So yeah, he was he was incapacitated. Didn't think he was going to get better and was considering. Uh, funny, funnily enough, haha, whatever. The assisted suicide thing, and I think that's when. Troy and I think maybe her mother, they might might have both been taking care of Alexander around then. And I was thinking to myself, this was a, this they, they certainly seemed to be suggesting that they might get together at that point or certainly teasing it. And I thought it was going to happen a lot sooner than it actually did. Mm-hmm. Future Imperfect was Riker's. It turns out he, he thinks he's on he's on a fake version of the Enterprise, but there's also Romulans involved, and then it ends up just being an alien that, and he are trapped in a cave. Oh, in weird. Cabin. And the alien's like, oh, I, I had this thing and I was by myself here. I just wanted you to stay. And then and it's happily they're back on the Enterprise. And so that's actually the same insignia? That's the episode it was from, yep. That, why would they? That's so weird. Yeah, I think they did it to save money. That, that's why. Oh, yeah. man. That's interesting. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. This seems like a missed opportunity. So now Jordy dies in this alternate. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of dark. And also he's naked. <laughs> so okay <laughs> and we have dr agua who skips a bunch of ranks from being a nurse to being dr Agua, the chief medical officer which hey anytime we get to get a little more from her i'm happy with that but oof. Uh, now that you mentioned I, I i i didn't catch it until you pointed out just then but she got admiral essentially yeah you're like a doctor I go, doctor. Doctor, I go, what? <laughs> and then Warp goes in a red uniform with commander pips, which at first I'm like, what happened to Riker? No, no, Riker is the captain. So this isn't loved it. Picard was killed in Best of Both Worlds, which makes total sense. And like it was, it, was that the one where really they teased well it? the continuity. Yeah, then they said that's why Riker was captain, was Picard was killed. Right. And man, it was a good look at what Riker would have been had he been captain for the last few years. I think his attitude and tone were different yeah. I, I think john the franks did an awesome job playing captain and while Worf was uncomfortable in the first officer position i could see Worf being riker's first officer it made mm. sense to me that that's how nice. it was. Wait, whereas but- in the regular timeline picard will choose data after riker instead of Worf. i could see Worf riker choosing mm. Worf instead of data that's right i just wanted to clarify or to, to, hmm, sorry go back and see if you confirmed what i was saying or asking was that when they first tease Patrick Stewart leaving the the, the series or something like that. The best of the yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Funny. Yeah. So then uh, I liked Worf's line a lot of when they told him he didn't remember. He said, "I do remember. I just remember differently." Yeah. yeah. And that was in there a number of times. Yes. And that's why I'm like, it's not a freaking concussion. If it was a concussion, he would not remember. Quit being stupid. But <laughs> it's very dementia. It is very dementia. Mm. Yeah. The security then we get this surprised me i did not see this coming will wheaton's back as crusher mm, yes yes now he's the lieutenant and he's the security chief which does not security chief me. i didn't catch that uh-huh. well he's in morph station so i assume oh, wow. he's chief. Uh-huh. his old station was manned by a cardassian did you see that no i wrote down oh, wow boy exclamation point so i'll drop a couple of production notes in here originally they talked about bringing back tasha yar like they thought mm. just did that with yesterday's enterprise that was like four seasons ago it would have made more sense to have her there we already did that so they like hey will you want to come back and you're like yeah. maybe that's what i was thinking of i mean I, you can still invite will back but put him at his station instead of security chief invite well, both. i think they only a budget for one it was going to be tasha yard is why they went with that but i i liked and maybe i read that i thought i read this somewhere that they were just they didn't even make a big deal about it they're like yep, yes here. and maybe at the time they did but I probably not. I, I, no, I don't think so. No, but it was a great. Yeah, I, I think it would have at the time. It probably would have even made a great surprise if they if they did it right. People would would, would freaked out over it. The way it was played in the freaked episode out. too. It was Thirty years was, later. Hmm? I oh yeah, out. yeah. But it's like the way they played in the episode was so casual that I kept questioning myself. Is, wait, is, is that Will Wheaton? Is that Will? And I loved it because that's the way it would happen. It would it wouldn't be like a. Here's here's fan. You know, there's not gonna be like a stinger. There's not gonna be uh <laughs> hey, you know, hey Wesley, hey Wesley, hey. It's just sort of like he's doing his job. He's there. It's any other day, and eventually, you know, he he's referred to by name and the correct sort of passing that would. You know, here's an order I'm issuing to this person. 
Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's cool they didn't make a big deal of it. If this had been Wesley's last appearance in Next Generation, I'd be super disappointed. He does have one more coming up this year, season. But see, I'm glad and, you missed oh. as, as does Tasha. So I'm glad this was ah. like, while we're talking about. I didn't, I didn't know that we're supposed to. You did it? No. Here, Keith, I'll help erase that. I'm going to tell you a different story. Originally, Picard was going to be the one who went through all this, and they were like, no, we feel like we've, it, again, to something we might talk about last week and earlier in this yep. episode, they were like, we kind of already did that. And they felt like there wouldn't be enough to develop. There wouldn't be anywhere to go with it as far as kind of the developments we end up having here. So they might even met our guy, Peter Allen Fields. That, or my, who's the other three name guy? Ira. No. Ira Bear. Ira Stephen Bear. He might have been the one that was mm. like, no, let's make it, let's make it, make it work, which I, I, I do think it was a better choice. Yep. And, and, and part of the reason, the other part of the, another part of the reason was like, it, it was, they're like, well, Picard's persona and everything, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't, he just wouldn't react the same. It wouldn't be the same. And it'd be much more interesting to see Worf go through these things. And I think that it goes all the way back to in our podcast episode, what we talked about, which is like the way Michael Dorn and, and Worf are a comedic character, but can be a serious character. But this episode isn't about him being a Klingon. It's about him being Worf, about mm-hmm. this guy who we've been with for seven seasons almost. Well, yeah. We're into the seventh season, so yeah. That's I was gonna say, yeah. A part part of it that yeah, the reason why the, I think the effect would be different would be the levels of power. As far as it, I'm not sure if, be, if it would be mo- too much more jarring or too much less jarring right. for the cat for the captain to be going through that. But it's not the same as you're kind of along for for the ride with someone who's just gotten back. He's gonna sort of in the, in the mid level of things and is gonna go. Oh, oh, I have to adjust and kind of do this and have to navigate things in a certain you know in a different way than well, you get what I'm saying and also now maybe maybe the, the, this is this was him again sort of playing diversity director before there was such a thing way back when because i think this was also another example where they probably wouldn't want to, wanted to try to just shift this off to give maybe give picard another like red kryptonite romance mm-hmm. so to speak yeah mm-hmm. i guess they just did that with, with beverly already so yeah so what, what, what would have been the point? Uh, only if they could have brought Gabrielle back, then I would have been okay. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, War, War clear, Warf's character clearly needed this this refresh, this kind of this kind of it worked, let's, yeah boost. It worked really well for that yeah. character. I agree with you there. They mentioned that in this time, that alternate timeline that the Bajorans are evil. They overpowered the Cardassians and then oh. they went totally evil. And wow. I guess that's why there's a Cardassian on the bridge because starts oh to up in and help the Cardassians out. Amazing. Mm. Then we find out Jordy's visor is the cause of all the issues. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Troy mentions her and Worf have two kids, and Alexander never existed, or at least she's not aware of Alexander. That was big, big yep. stuff. Yep. It made me wonder what happened with Alexander, but whatever. Riker's moment when he sees the long dead Picard on the view screen, and he's like, it's good to see you again. Man, John mm-hmm. Derbrex is killing it this episode. He didn't have a lot yeah. to do, but he killed it when he did. I thought Frakes was great, and this is my this is no hyperbole. This is my favorite Marina Sirtis. I oh yeah, thought yeah. she was locked in. I thought she conveyed. Fun. I thought she. This can be an insulting to people, but not to me. I, it just seems so natural. You know, when she was happy in the episode, she brought the the pathos. She brought everything. Mm-hmm. I just thought she just ran the gamut and just did a great job. This has nothing to do with all of her her great fashion sense, which she covered. I just thought acting wise. They gave her a lot to chew on. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know how I love Face of the Enemy, but I think this is my favorite Marina Sirtis so far. So, so far. Yeah. You, you reminded me of something that, that I, I kind of, hmm, too many reminds here we go. <laughs> so, around the, of the, around the beginning of this episode, I was talking about Worf's decision to ask or not ask riker at the end when they set this they set those things up for us and me mm-hmm. tracing back how this is probably maybe a spur of the moment decision but i also considered around this area of the episode we're talking about how they they led us up to that point they built it actually as i think we're all fond of saying i think they earned it through the through some of these interactions there was uh the, so the we we've learned that in as he gets progressively further away from his uh, chain of real realities or whatever choices the two children and so forth you know this version he and deanna pro- had probably been together longer than the others i'm getting distracted by jimmy's other question about Ale- alexander because i started thinking about a theory not important yet point is 
Worf is asking these questions about how he's going to get back, and he's like, okay, so because he he like jumped right to this. He's you know Dave, they're talking about the the scientific solutions, and he seemed you know almost eager to let's okay let's get this going. What do I do? And there is that bit of a, a look shot back and forth, at, you know, there where we see Deanna's reaction and we see his reaction to Deanna's reaction, you know, almost like, w w is it really that bad here? Do you really want to leave that badly? Are you really that different from, you know, am I, mm -hmm. would it be that, you know, what, what I'm, yeah, you can say, would I yeah. make you that unhappy? And that him being affected by that. And so yeah. I think the, like the kiss at the end there, this is that, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Red Kryptonite fits here, but let's, you know, we're, we're here. Mm -hmm. I thought, to my, I, I think I, I actually said something to myself there. I wouldn't normally, like, yeah, you know, I'd probably do that too. We're there. It's, it was, he was, you know, having trouble finding the words for this. I think in other circumstances, and we, we've seen like little variations of things like this where it's like, I don't know, he shouldn't kiss this person because blah, blah, blah. You know, that person's not in their right mind, or this is some, you know, what I'm saying trance spell thing that might, might make it seem like, a, a little creepy but that's this is for this this person might not exist anymore or she might be there without her version of war coming back at all all kinds of possibilities and he in a sense is taking that away from her and also i don't know i it's it's almost like yes he was possibly curious himself to experience what that would be like warp the character mm -hmm. you know he's he's been doing this for a while. I was like what, what would this be like maybe i should consider this and also it would have been, might have been excessively cruel to just keep going. Okay, I, I don't want to be here. Bye. Sorry about whatever. Maybe maybe leave her with a nice memory of of, of Worf instead. So you know, an, an acknowledgement of the the affection they shared. So you went with the Mitch and old school strategy of no, no, that's cool. Let's go with this. Yeah, which I think <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Didn't turn out good from that. Was that a Will Ferrell? Luke Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, no, so. let's go with this. Yeah, I, I did. I was affected by Worf hugging and kissing Troy goodbye. I think yeah. that was like he was really enticed by that possibility of being with her, which of course we saw at the end of the episode. Did you hear what I was saying about it being compassionate in a way too? I'm not yeah. sure if you were just yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I, just to and this is my my final note. I'm going back a little bit, but Worf's trying to talk to Troy and like Troy thinks they've been married, blah blah blah. And he says, and no one believes me. And she says, whatever's wrong, whatever happened, I want you to know that I believe you and that I love you. Wow. And I wrote, I believe her. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just because Marina Sirtis is beautiful and Troy is beautiful. I, again, I just thought this was her star acting to me. But mm -hmm. again, I thought that it, I liked the episode a lot, as I said. So I just thought, and I thought that was, for me, that was the best, even the best, the kiss was cool, but this was great too. Of her like, I know something's going on. I believe you. I'm, I'm here. Which I, which is always, and it's a true response for all of her, her, her crew members she's close to, but obviously it's a little different here. So. Mm -hmm. That's my last note. Oh, I just thought of one last thing and something I probably should have written. I hadn't written anything. Else. The, that first switch, you know, what, what, of course, you know, you didn't, why did you lock the door? You know, why wouldn't I that thing? And mm -hmm. that, that gradual progression toward the bed and all, all, all everything, uh -huh. the, you know, the hands and the massage. Where it's just you can see that that sort of misunderstanding kind of happening, where where Worf is sort of like, well, this this is strange, but it's not quite out of character yet. This is not you know, and then then that that kiss in the neck and the eyeballs, just hit the way his you know the, the the look of shock crossing his face, I I just really appreciated for the you know for the the comedy of it. Yeah, I mean, there's an argument that he'd be like, you know what, I'm just going to stay in this universe <laughs> <laughs> for sure. The crazy Riker and Worf that we saw who tried to destroy the shuttle. That was, yeah, awesome. that yeah. was insane. So I guess that's like one of the things that sold it for a lot of Trek folks out there. They love that. Like I said, and as I alluded to earlier, I, I thought that was one of the, the more like, Oh, snap. That, you know, we only got a few pictures of these alternate universes, but I thought that one was the most effective. And again, as you said, Jimmy, Frakes commits to it and just like, yep. And then and Worf's just in the background of that one, but can you imagine a universe where Riker and Worf are willing to destroy and kill to, yeah. because they're so miserable? Yeah, and I was even like, they're going to have to blow that ship up, but I hope they don't. And then they do. I felt bad. 
Me too. So, but that, honestly, it was probably putting them out of their misery. It was probably for the best. Right. You're right. Right. They they, they did mention the the detail that you know let you that allowed me to infer at least that they were probably gonna you know seconds from being destroyed no matter what maybe minutes they so, were gonna their yeah. their alternate plan was to fly to a star yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like the shot of the lots of wharfs in the shuttle even though it didn't fully make sense to me yeah. based on the way the episode played out yeah well no it, it was those were the the different possibilities superimposing as they were unraveling it's the so it's, does that mean the different wharfs all went back to their own ships I'm not sure what they're trying to trying to indicate there necessarily as far as the, that resolution, but it was more like I, I can think of some other movies. More, I, I can't it, it got a but, little confusing. But, well, the point yeah. th- these are the different. You know, it seems like a Rick and Morty thing, like where they've done before. Uh, but see, they're, they have the different enterprises, so I would think the different wharfs would be on the different enterprises. Right. They only need one wharf to get on one shuttle from two specific realities. That's no, that's what that's, that's makes sense to me. That's not what they were trying to convey. They were trying to convey these are the different possibilities that were occurring. Right, uh, I the, think. I didn't understand that they were trying to convey that. I just don't think it made sense with the way they presented the scenario. Well, hmm. because the scenario was there's a lot of different enterprises, a lot of different wharfs, right. and our one wharf from one enterprise is jumping between the enterprises and taking over basically the other wharf's position. So when they got that one wharf from that one reality to get on the one shuttle from the other reality so you can mm-hmm. go home, why would there be any wharfs from any other realities on that shuttle? It's not no. like all the wharfs had to get on all the shuttles to go home. It was just that, one. That's not, that's not what they're trying to show you. They're trying to, it's, those are like ghost images of the different possibilities of positions as he's traveling back through them. This is like, this is this version. back through them. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're like overlapping. So there's only slight variations that would have happened. But this, this version of the wharf would have been standing here by the wall looking at this thing on the way back from the tournament where this one would have been doing this other thing sort of at this exact moment in time, or he might've yeah. been slightly to the left or slightly or maybe overlapped. So yeah, those are just. I was going to go with, but that makes more sense. I was super, super position. 285,000. So if eight of the wharfs decided I got to get to the shuttle, then yeah. that, that's not a ton out of 285,000. Right. No, no, th- th- those, those weren't all actually there. They were just, they were supposed to be I think, more sense. translucent than they might've appeared at different places. They're kind of fading in and out. To, to get to the one that was actually supposed to be there. Also, isn't that that song in Rent, 285,000? 600 wharfs. 285,000, <laughs> 600 wharfs. <laughs> yeah, that's Jonathan Larson ripped off Star Trek because that, that well, would have yeah. came out uh, last year. Is, is that our first Rent reference? <laughs> you know, it might be, but it should have not have taken us this many hundreds of episodes <laughs> to get to Rent. <laughs> I well, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the economy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The rent's too damn high. Uh, yep. I was disappointed at the end that Worf actually went back in time a few days and nobody remembered anything. I, I feel like it would have been a little more effective if somebody had remembered something. Yeah. Hmm. I think the, he was supposed to feel relief because right. he was back home. But yeah, I'm with yeah. you. And then we find out that the real Riker really does like surprises, but Troy convinced him not to do the surprise party. Yeah. I appreciated that. I mean, that's showing how close Worf and Troy are becoming in this reality. It has nothing to do with any of the other realities. Right. But then he asks her to dinner very awkwardly, and the ordering champagne, like, she's pleased by it. Yeah. He's not confused, but it still feels out of left field. And I guess it sets up that she was hoping and expecting maybe for it before he asked, but he also took some big liberties of, you want to stay for dinner? Okay, I'm ordering champagne. Like, Oh, you skipped the step where you ask her, like, is she actually interested? All right. So, I mean, my, my take on that at the time was with that many possibilities or that, there are that many instances where they had gotten that close, it's mm-hmm. unlikely that there were many versions of Troy that would not have been attracted to him in, sure. on some level. And it, it was happening gradually enough where I could see that they were kind of reading some signals back and forth. That, that awkwardness was sort of like a tentative read, you know, reading the room kind of thing. I'm presenting this possibility how do you feel about it and she was giving off some subtle things that yeah. reminded me of, of why you know a possible explanation for why they wanted would want to take him back in time a little bit mm-hmm. to that point i mean what i mean there are a couple of reasons why scientifically i'm trying to use air quotes there that would make the most sense that's where that point of divergence probably happened that's where the thing you know the radiation whatever got him it would avoid certain kinds of paradoxes or other kinds of you know Things they could, that other fans might point to is like, but but that's not possible because this would affect blah blah blah. Yeah. So he's he's yeah he he remains the sole point of 
divergence from everything. So, one other production note: the guys that did the 2009 Kelvin Universe pointed to this as like, <laughs> well, here's why the continuity can continue, <laughs> and you can pretend like this is separate. <laughs> this episode. I'm sorry. Three <laughs> <laughs> already because. <laughs> Realities in here made sense for branch off from the existing universe. Kelvin does not <laughs> at all make sense branching out from the existing universe. Okay, good. I'm, we will I'm, have that discussion when we get to the Kelvin movies. Well, our, our I'll reserve that discussion mainly for the 2009 film. But uh, okay, all that I'm makes good. me so angry that they would point to this as justifying their yeah. terrible ideas. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> that that makes me relieved because I was amused at first, and I was worried. Oh no, what did Stephen just do? He might have just tanked the rating of this episode. <laughs> but I don't want. Yeah, this, yeah. I've oh, that you just. Now, I went from a zero to angry in half a second there. <laughs> 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 anyway, my alternate episode is I think they should have been in an earlier season because mm. for several reasons. One, we would have had more time to explore Warf and Troy because the series is almost over at this point. Mm. We've got like a dozen episodes left. Mm. Second. We just had the Crusher episode last season that was similar. The series finale has some elements that I feel run too close to this. That's only like I a dozen episodes away. Line. So I'm really not loving where this falls in the thing, even though I think it was a decent story on its own. Would you say that it falls maybe parallel to those lines that, that runs along Stephen? Some, somewhere <laughs> along the line? I think what you meant to say, Keith, was arbitrary <laughs> lines. Oh. Who is your annoyance in parallels? First of all, do we... We got to rank Wesley, right? Oh, I totally forgot wow. about that. On a scale of one to ten of him being annoying, I'm putting him at one because he was at the wrong station. But other than that, I'm I'm good. So I gave him a two just because there was one line of techno babble I did not like. <laughs> so I'm blaming him. But okay. yeah. Keith. I was at a zero. I was just too happy. So is it one or is it is that what? Or is it... uh, I went with a zero. You went with a zero. Oh, Keith, actually, you, you, you said one. You went with a two. I said one. Oh, I did say one because of that thing. Yes. So yes, it would be a one. You're right. I did say one because he shouldn't have been security, but okay. Zero then you're putting him at zero. Yes. And Steven said two. So one is his average. That may be the lowest he's ever been. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. We had some ones across the board. I don't know that we ever gave him zeros. I think we always said it had to be at least one. Well, Uh, all right. In this case, case, I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. 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 Okay. You said the scale's from one to ten when you introduced it, and you then you ranked I did one, say so that. I did I say that. Like, I think. Eh. Well, we're uh, but I'm allowing a zero. With the, I'm allowing a zero this time. I'm Screw the two zero. Hmm. All right, whatever. <laughs> okay, so who was your annoyance, if not uh, Wesley? Because it doesn't sound like Wesley's giving me anyways. Annoyance. Whoever comes up with these generic titles, that is who is my <laughs> the titler. Sounds like a oh, Batman yeah. villain. The titler, yeah. Hot Rod Shangler villain. Ooh, let me plant that out there. <laughs> Ooh, I like that idea. Yeah. With Crusher, because again, she had experience. He yeah, had loses right. memory, just had different memories. That's, oh, that's pretty give good. Give him a little more examination. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. I was going to, I guess I'm going to go with whoever cheated him out of uh, that trophy and got him ninth place in that one reality, mm-hmm. which brings me, brings me back to why I, I think I'm going to settle my, my first choice for the alternate title, which should be. Finishing in first place, mm. which is uh, coming. I would call it second sight, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Who are you having a drink with? Hmm. Uh, running to stand still would have been my title. Hmm. This will not be a surprise, Troy. I'm going with Captain Riker, the like not insane version, the one that was just happy to card again. Yeah, I liked uh, Troy, of course, but uh, close every hmm? five seconds on our date, on our of not course. date, not date, but our, while we're drinking yeah. champagne. Yes, champion. There's something I liked about the tone of informational data. <clears throat> that was, that data was good... with the gray contacts instead of the yellow contacts. I didn't catch that. They changed his contact color at one point. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. The one that was catching him up on what had what had happened. It was I let I remember really liking when they, they the way they played the scene without wasting our time with it either. It wasn't like why do you want to know this? Showing surprise I, or it was just it, your answers. The, one of the reviews I read that. They still liked it a lot, but they, they dropped a little bit was because mm. the the techno babble. But I thought mm. having if you have data deliver it, it sounds a lot better than mm. yeah. video. Yeah, and I agree with Keith. I liked that mm. version of data. So uh, drink there, ask him some questions about what's going on with these realities and what what's different here, that sort of thing. You know. Yeah. Ranking the episode, let's start with the last next gen episode, Inheritance. Data's mother. Better or worse. Better. I'm I'm just yeah. I'm I'm, on this that's one. unanimous. How many episodes are we into this season? 10 or this is the 11th episode. Okay. Hmm. Of, I think, 26. 
25. It's mm. a lot. We're not halfway yet. Above that are Gambit's part one and two. We can separate them if you want, but Gambit was Picard undercover. undercover. Yeah. I think I'd put it above both the Gambit. Yeah. Gambit. I, I'm like superlatives across the board on this, but I actually did hesitate because I remember Gambit got me because mostly because of the element of surprise as far as me just not thinking it was going to be what it was. And yeah. You know. So above that is liaisons. That's the one where Worf, Troy, and Picard deal with the three different aliens that each have a floor exploring a foreign concept of emotion. Good one. Yeah, still above. I think I'm one above too. That puts it in first place for the season thus far. Wow. Hence, why it should be called finishing in first place <laughs> oh, again. So, I yes. <laughs> if I think if this was in another season, it would be in the middle. But for the final season, is not as uneven as it's been yeah. i'm comfortable with the feeding at first i think it was a good episode i also liked liaisons and the two gambits inherent where this season starts to lose it for me and that's not even halfway down so it's just been a bad season so right. that that's why i think this is a middling episode but it's the best we've gotten thus far this year all right so uh, at, the, at the risk of an insulting intelligence out there somewhere i just do want to spell out the rest of that so at the beginning, we see Worf traveling back from his tournament. He has a first place trophy that he's recording the log about. It just keeps changing places and doesn't, you know, keeps going all these other places, you know, dropping and rank, not even having gone, being replaced. And then finally, we come back full circle and he's finished in first place where he should have been in the first place. So there, there you, you go. go. So what would you call this episode then? Finishing in first place. Finishing in first place. <laughs> So next week, <laughs> I, you, you, know what, you know what, Pete? I second that. Well, we actually well, have a- <laughs> on, on your second sight when you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have a couple of Deep Space Nine episodes in a row, but the next one that we're going to get to is called Sanctuary, a race that has been conquered twice over. One of the conquerors being the mysterious Dominion. Ooh, that name came back up. Mm. Comes to the station seeking aid and a new home. Well, that's already a very catchy title, Sanctuary. I swear to God, there was a TNG episode called Sanctuary, wasn't there? Or that's, that's that familiar. that that dome planet or something or it might have been Haven yeah Haven. I just there was a Haven there is no TNG episode called Sanctuary my God it's going to be so confusing all the things there's and, no Sanctuary in and it's it's not a great title but we get another mention of the Dominion so I think we're going to get maybe a couple more clues about the Dominion I'm excited about anyway well, uh until then live long live long maybe live long live long long live hmm. and we have to change it around and right, I see. prosper prosper no, i can't go back there i'm not gonna live long no i refuse to go back it's too awful there and prosper i can't prosper i'll probably can prosper here and prosper <laughs>